Mayort, the African island that voted to be governed by France. On the 22nd of November, 1974, the four Comoros Islands held an independence referendum. Three of the islands chose to become independent from France, except Mayotte. Why did this island that is part of the Comoros archipelago choose to remain under French rule, while the rest of the Comoros Islands voted for independence? That is what we will dive into today. Hello and welcome to Africa Revealed, where we explore African stories from history and modern times. In today's video, we will examine the choice of Mayotte, while other African countries voted for independence. If you like the content, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. The Comoros Islands are islands situated between the coast of mainland southeastern Africa and the northwestern coast of Madagascar. We have also already published a video on the Comoros Islands, which I invite you to watch after having watched this one to the end. The archipelago is made up mainly of four large islands, Ngazija, Enzuwani, Mwali, and Mayotte, also known as Mao. Today the first three islands are part of the Union of Comoros while Mayotte is an overseas French department. But why is this case? Well, to answer that question we have to go back in time to as early as the 6th century. Note that the history of Mayotte is closely intertwined with the history of the other islands. Before we start, can you guess what people from Mayotte are called? They are called Mahorans. Did you guess correctly? We need to go back in time to the 6th century, as this is probably the first time the island was inhabited. Bantu-speaking people and Malagasy people probably made up the bulk of the population. Other visitors were Arabs, Somalis, and Indians. Because of this, the Comoros Islands together with Zanzibar, Pemba, Lamu, and other Kenyan and Tanzanian coastal towns formed a prosperous region in which Swahili culture flourished. Swahili culture was the result of the mixing of the Bantu and Arab cultures. Even today a major language spoken in Mayotte, Shimo, is a close relative of Swahili. Fun fact, the Comoros region gets its name from the word Kamar, which is an Arabic word meaning moon. The Arabs referred to the archipelago as the islands of the moon. In 1500, the Mao Sultanate was established on the island. Mayotte is French for Mao. A few years later in 1503, the Portuguese sailed past the island and named it Espirito Santo, but the name did not stick. In 1505 they finally landed on the island. Because of its treacherous harbours and smaller size, the island remained underdeveloped compared to its neighbours and often fell victim to pirate raids. The island was also often raided by Malagasy warriors for slaves. This depleted the island's population as well as the rest of Comoros. By the early 19th century, the island was ruled by sultans aligned with the Anjone Sultanate, who ruled Enzuwani Island. However, it remained sparsely populated. As the century progressed, the island was fought for between different sultans. In 1832 a former king of Iboina in Madagascar, Andrainsali, conquered the island and became Sultan of Mayotte. Then in 1935, the Anjone Sultanate regained the island and installed a Qadi, that is a Sharia court judge, as governor. Andriansali was having none of it and conquered the island again a year later. The last Sultan of Mayotte realized that he needed a powerful ally to keep the Anjone Sultanate out of the island. The constant war had depleted the island's wealth and population. He then made a decision that would change the history of Mayotte forever, by seeking when he started negotiations with the French. At the end of these negotiations, Mayotte was bought by the French in 1841. In later years France colonized the rest of the Comoros Islands as well. When the French bought the island slavery was abolished. They also started plantations on the island and brought in new laborers. Unfortunately, the abolition of slavery did not improve the freed slaves' lives, because they were often forced to work under harsher conditions by the French colonialists on their new plantations. Despite the influx of new French plantation owners, the island was still sparsely populated and the French government tried to attract settlers by promising compensation, much like it had done on another island, Reunion. 
We did a video on why Reunion chooses to remain under France, so you can watch that video if you missed it. Another similarity between what the French did in Mayotte and La Reunion was that they focused on sugar exportation as the main money maker. From the 1850s hundreds of African labors moved to the island, especially from Mozambique to work in the sugar industry. Unfortunately in the early 1880s, the sugar crisis hit and the plantations and factories were closed. The island turned to the exportation of fragrant plants that did well in the tropical climate like vetiver, sandalwood, and ilang ilang, which are used in the perfume industry. In 1858 a new constitution saw the French government treat the four islands as one unit with internal autonomy. A double administration was put in place in Comoros with a high administrator representing the French interests on one side. On the other side was a local representative government elected by Comorians. The high administrator still had a lot of power. In this arrangement, as the least populous island Mayotte only had four representatives in the assembly. Over time the local Mayotte population felt that the local government in the capital Moroni on Gazija did not care about their best interests at heart. As such the Mayotte population would often appeal to the French representative than to their local government. Thus began the Francophilia that would set the island apart from the other three in years to come. In the late 60s and early 70s, the fervent push for independence that rose in the other islands was a bit cooler in Mayotte. In 1974 an independence referendum was called. Leading up to this, there were calls to make Mayotte a French department. These were spearheaded by the Movement Populaire Maharais or MPM party. The party campaign took inspiration from loyalist parties from La Réunion. MPM believed that the best thing was a continuation of the union with France. They felt that their interests as the smallest island of Comoros would be ignored by the Moroni government as they had been before. The loyalist movement picked up, and in both referendums held in 1974 and 1976, Mayotte voted to remain under France. In 1974, 63% of the population voted to remain, while in 1976, 99% of the population voted to remain. The independent union of Comoros still claims the island, while over 20 UN Security Council resolutions condemned France's annexation of the island. This is because of the UN's principle of decolonization. However, since 1995, the UN General Assembly has not discussed the Mayotte question after more referendums have shown that. The people of Mayotte have a strong desire to remain part of France. France carried out another referendum in March 2009 on whether to change Mayotte from an overseas community to an overseas department of France. The move was supported by 99.5% of voters. This made it France's 101st department and the farthest region of the European Union. The island elects two deputies to France's National Assembly and two senators to the Senate. Executive power lies with the French government. Another unique fact is that about 90% of the population is Muslim. This population adheres to informal Sharia law, although this is not upheld by any of France's laws. Islam was established on the island by the different sultans that ruled before French colonialism. Still, it's not all smooth sailing for the island. The standard of living on the island is still far behind that of metropolitan France and that of Reunion as well. Today, over 310,000 people live in Mayotte, with 47% born on the island, 5% born in the rest of France, and 48% born outside of Mayotte. Most of the immigrants are from Comoros. This has led to anger among Mahorans over illegal immigration, as desperate Comoros immigrants flock to the island. According to a study that was done, 70% of the babies born in the capital Mamoudzu were born to immigrant mothers with no papers. The French government doesn't seem to care and has done nothing to curb illegal immigration to the island. Gang violence has also increased on the island, impeding tourism which is an important economic activity on the island. Macron did not make the situation any better when in 2017, not knowing he was being filmed he made a joke about Kwasa Kwasa boats. 
He said, the kwasa kwasa isn't really used for fishing it's used to carry comorans. What angered many is that over 10,000 have died trying to cross from Comoros to Mayotte on the boats. And even more infuriating is that apart from the remark, France has not done much about the situation. So to answer the question, why does Mayotte choose to remain under France? As the smallest island in Comoros, it felt that its interests might be ignored by the larger islands and felt safer with the French. Like in Reunion, France has invested in the island by upgrading public services and infrastructure. Some might say that it has paid off. In 2019, the GDP per capita of Mayotte at market value exchange was eight times that of the Union of Comoros. Thanks for watching this video. If this is your first time on the channel, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments what topics you'd like to see covered. See you soon in our new video.